I think this has gone pretty unnoticed, but FNAF AR has been holding this franchise together pretty well lately. Sure, we've had the occasional book release and plenty of teasers, but none compared to some of the stuff we've been getting from Special Delivery. And today, I'm here to talk about one of the coolest and most recent additions to the game, the Sizzling Summer Event. Similar to one of my recent videos, I'll again be covering some possible well-hidden details and secrets that when put together form some very interesting lore reveals. You guys seem to like the last special delivery video, so I figured I would make another one since we've got some really cool things to cover. Also on the topic of the last AR video, the statement the special delivery skins aren't canon is a weak mindset since one it has neither been confirmed nor denied that certain content in FNAF AR is canon, and two, it's just more efficient and kind of fun to theorize with new things under the possibility that those details are in fact canon. Personally, I would rather theorize and be wrong than miss out on the fun and regret not solving it myself. So today, under the theoretical idea that the FNAF AR skins are canon, let's get right into the theories. First off, for a little more context on today's main topic, the Sizzling Summer event began July 24th and ended August 13th. The event included four brand new skins, the Flamethrower Endo, Broiler Baby, Scorch and Chica, and undoubtedly the best edition, Flaming Springtrap. This event brought along some really cool concepts and designs, but also a small conspiracy that surprisingly fits together very well. So let's start with the first skin from the event, the Flamethrower Endoskeleton. Now, as you can probably tell, this skin is very unique, but also comes with some very interesting ideas. When I made my last FNAF AR video, the Endo had just come out and I came up with an interesting but admittedly flawed theory in an attempt to explain it. My idea at the time was that the Endo was designed as a maintenance bot meant to aid in the construction of the Pizzaplex Mall, premiering in the upcoming Security Breach game. At the time, this was a good idea, but now I think I've got a better idea. I got a lot of suggestions and comments suggesting the idea that maybe the Flamethrower Endo was built by Fazbear Entertainment in an attempt to eradicate the Springtrap animatronics. This was a pretty good idea at the time too, but I think it's practically confirmed at this point with the addition of Flaming Springtrap, which is just about exactly what we've been missing since the Fast Pair Frights incident. This has got to be one of the best skins added to Special Delivery in my opinion, and in the opinions of many others. Now, while this skin looks pretty epic, it's the confirmation of this theory that's really important. So, with that Endo Hunting Springtraps idea really established, most of you probably think that's just crazy and that these skins aren't canon, but let me throw some more evidence in. Let's talk about Broiler Baby, which just had an absolutely insane design. I mean, the Flamethrower Endo looked different, but this one was just crazy. I personally would have preferred Incinerator Baby, Stove Baby, or Oven Baby, but this still makes sense. Now, moving past these crazy designs, how could I manage to fit Baby into this mini eradication theory? Well, what if I told you that the Flamethrower Endo and Broiler Baby were a tag team, with the Endo going on the offensive and Broiler Baby as a disposal unit? I was trying to expand on my construction theory with Broiler Baby, and she just didn't fit cleanly, at least until Flaming Springtrap. I mean, just look at her broiler stomach, it's the perfect disposal unit, especially for the charred remains of a newly destroyed Springtrap animatronic. So to summarize, we've got Baby and the Endo as a tag team targeting Springtraps and flaming Springtrap, which is clearly shows that the Endo didn't really do a good enough job at destroying him. Now that just leaves one left, Scorching Chica who has to be simultaneously the coolest and creepiest Chica we've gotten so far. I mean, just look at that cupcake. Let it stare into your soul. Anyways, with Chica, I'm still less certain of how to explain her, but I do have some possible ideas. The first and least plausible idea expands a concept I brought up in the last AR video. 
In order to explain the toxic animatronics, I covered the possibility that the world of Five Nights at Freddy's may have some wasteland-like landscapes containing biohazards likened to Chernobyl by some commenters. This idea was that maybe similar to a wasteland, there was some sort of scorching environment or season that would cause this to happen to Chica. But I know it's a weak theory, so I've got some more ideas. Next up on the list is a kind of idea supported by Illumix in their promotional messages for Scorching Chica. This one on Twitter reads, Well, the next Sizzling Summer animatronic might have overheated a bit. Is it possible that this Chica may have done exactly what Illumix said it did? Just overheated. Just an error or malfunction causing the animatronic to ignite from the inside. It's possible. And right now, I feel I need to elaborate on just how durable these animatronics are. I mean, Springtrap is on fire and, you know, just fine. Now, moving past that, I've got one more scenario which is my personal favorite and the most plausible explanation. Again, typing it into this Springtrap eradication theory. So, let me just propose a not so shocking idea that Fazbear Entertainment is cheap and probably pretty good at cutting corners. So under that assumption, the flamethrower endo would probably be pretty faulty. Maybe not so good at distinguishing Springtrap from Chica, who have slightly similar colors to each other. What I'm getting at is that maybe the endo accidentally burned a couple Chicas under the faulty assumption that they were in fact a Springtrap. It's definitely flawed, but still possible, just something to chew on for all you AR fans. So just to summarize, after hearing of the Springtrap animatronic from user complaints, Fazbear Entertainment assembles the flamethrower endoskeleton and broiler baby as a way to eliminate and dispose of the Springtrap threat. They release the eradication team, but as always, things don't go as planned. It seems that usually when attempting to destroy Springtrap, the duo fails and Springtrap is just left wandering, but an even bigger threat being set ablaze. Another thing that goes wrong is that sometimes the Endo mistakes Chica for Springtrap and ignites her instead. Now that's a more or less basic explanation of the Sizzling Summer event, and I hope you all enjoyed my conclusions. Now since the that's about all for that topic, as a little extra piece to this video, I think it's time to talk about FNAF AR's newest event, the Dark Circus event, and its newest animatronic, Ballora the Ballerina. Now, it's interesting, but if I'm not mistaken, code for Ballora has actually been in the game for quite a while, possibly from earlier versions of the game, but is just now being used. So how this all started was that soon after the Sizzling Summer event ended, Illumix made some posts stating that they would be teasing the next character in hopes that we could figure out who it would be before release. The first teaser we got for this new event was an in-game email shown here, and you can bet we all thought it was going to be Lefty. I mean, seriously, that's literally Lefty's signature line. It's funny, but this isn't the first time Illumix has trolled us like this. So nowadays, the shop usually has some little uh, icon Fazcoin bundles to help you get some of the older profile icons. And right after the release of Scorching Chica, there were four icons in the shop. The Endo, Baby, Chica, and Balloon Boy. Yeah, they made us think that some sort of melted, scorched, burning Balloon Boy would be the final character. A good thing that that was a misdirect, cause Flaming Springtrap is pretty epic, and I would prefer Flaming Springtrap over Balloon Boy pretty much any day. Now getting back on topic, there isn't really much to say about Ballora. I mean, yeah, she's a new character, but she's easily explainable lore-wise. She's there for the same reasons Baby is there, just as a classic Funtime animatronic from the Circus Baby's Pizza World generation. Now, on the gameplay side of things, her brand new mechanics and strategies make her a great addition, but what are those strategies exactly? I'm guessing most of you have a rudimentary understanding of how to beat her, but don't fully understand what to do. So thanks to some FNAF AR experts on Discord, I'm here with a sort of guide on how to beat Ballora, since she's pretty freaking difficult. 
So, first of all, Ballora works similarly to Mangle, but with a couple extra mechanics. When beginning the battle, just don't move. Then, when your noise meter gets lower, you can move very, very slowly. This noise meter goes up as you move, and moving too quickly or frequently will result in your death as the meter hits full. So, you have to move slowly, right? Well, you also can't, under any circumstances, look at Ballora or in her direction. Ballora's noise meter goes up the closer you're looking at her. If it's full, then you're probably looking straight at her. If she's very close to you, then just try to always look in the opposite direction, but very slowly. Also, if you see a distraction of her, aka the stances, and then disappear, don't react. Just continue with what you were doing and look away. Next up is the mini arenas. While you're trying to stay quiet, some mini arenas may attempt to crawl on your screen. If this happens, then shake them off immediately. I'm not certain if the shaking makes noise, so try to be quiet about it. You may hear the noises of mini arenas crawling without seeing them, and if this happens, just shake them off anyways. It seems that the mini arenas crawling animations may be particularly bugged now for some of them. Now, relating to the mini arenas, that there is absolutely no reason to be looking up. Always be looking to the ground, similar to how you may face baby. The reason for this is that during the span of your encounter, three different broken mini arenas will spawn on the ground, which you have to collect. Their spawning is completely random, so there's nothing to signify when they may spawn. After collecting all three mini arenas, Ballora will spider crawl at you and short circuit before your death. That's basically the most comprehensive guide I can provide on how to defeat Ballora. I've personally only beat her once, and I think my problem was looking at her, but maybe I was doing something else wrong, not quite sure. Now, since that's all I have to say for this video relating to FNAF AR, there are a couple things I need to mention regarding myself and the channel. First of all, you've all probably noticed that my voice sounds a lot different, and that's because I ordered a new mic, which in my opinion, sounds much better, and I hope you all enjoyed the quality as well. Something else you've probably noticed is my lack of content over the last month, and this is because of some school picking back up, some burnout, and just other things happening IRL. I can't promise a reliable upload schedule anymore, but I can say that I'll try to have some videos made relating to more recent content that I haven't touched upon yet. I'll hopefully work on some videos relating to the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative and Bunny Call, which I am attempting to avoid spoilers for till I get the book. If you guys want to chat with me in between videos, then join my Discord, which will be linked in the description below. So, as always, thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, then maybe like or something, I don't really care. And make sure to subscribe for more FNAF related videos in the future, since there's some amazing stuff being brewed up by Scott right now.